Okay, so today three it is three thirteen eighteen. Okay, now inverse. Watch. Everything has an opposite. Okay, opposite of add or subtract. Opposite of multiply is divide. Even with graphing, graphing has inverse. So to have an inverse relation, what we're going to do is every point x, y will go to y, x. So all you do in graphing to do its opposite, you just switch the, the variables. The y's become the x's, and the x's become the... So as an example, if I have point A, which is, say, 5, negative 2, it's inverse, and we use this little symbol here, a negative 1. That's the symbol for inverse, okay? Which simply equal negative 2, 5, okay? That's all you do. To do an inverse on graphing, this is the opposite of graphing. How do you do the opposite of graphing? You just switch the x and y's. That's all. You just switch the x and y's. I went from 5, negative 2, and that inverse point becomes negative 2, 5. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Just switch them around, okay? So, what we talk about is this little symbol. If it is a function, okay, if it's an inverse function, we use this f of negative 1, okay? Not everything has an inverse function. We'll look at that. Remember, it's got to pass that vertical line test. You can't have two prices for one latte, right? We've talked about it, okay? So not everything has an inverse. But if it does have an inverse, we use this f of negative 1 of x is the symbol, meaning that it's an inverse function. And we're going to look at some that have inverses and some that don't have inverses in the lesson, okay? So, now, if we switch the x and the y, then all the x's are switched for all the y's. All the x's are the domains, right? And all the y's are the range. So when you switch it around, what happens is this. With domain and range is that the domain becomes the range of the function okay because you're going to switch all x's and all y's so the domain then becomes the range of the function and and the range becomes the domain of the function and the range becomes the domain of the function, okay? So if you're going to switch x and y's, you're going to switch all the x and y's. That means all of the domain becomes all of the range, and all of the range becomes all of the domain, because we've switched all the x's to y's, and we've switched all the y's to x's, okay? Because the x's are the domains, but then we change them into y's, which makes them the range, and all the y is the range, but we switch them into the x's, which is becomes the domain, okay? So, first of all, I'm going to get out a piece of graph paper, and I'm going to actually do this one. It says, graph y equals 3x plus 6, and a 1 third x minus 2. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that, okay? Take out my graph paper. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do this. So, first of all, let's put, let's put them in two different colors. Okay, I'm going to put... I'll put the first one in brown, I'll put the second one in green, okay? So you can see them together, okay? So if I graph 3x plus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And I would go up 3 over 1, but I'm kind of running out of space, so I'll just do the opposite. 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, right? And I'll graph that. Here's my first equation, okay? That's my y equals my 3x plus 6. My other equation will start at negative 2, right? We'll go up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3, so forth and so on, okay? Okay. How am I doing? These 
two graphs are inverses. Tammy, you got it? I'm going to go through. Okay, you want to look at the brown graph or the green graph? Start, we'll do this for start at 6, right? And I'd go up 3 over 1, so up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, right? And this one we start at negative 2. And we'd go up 1 over 3, right? So here's what I want to do. Check this out. So let's look at these points. This is the point at 0, negative 2. This is the point at negative 2, 0, isn't it? This is a point at 1, 2, 3, negative 1. This is the point at negative 1, 3. The points are reversed, aren't they? And if we were to look at every single point, every single point would, would be reviewed, reversed. This is the point at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 6, 0. And this point's at 0, 6. They have to be inverses of each other because every single x, y has been switched to make a new point that's the y-x, okay? So these two graphs are indeed inverses of each other. So these are inverses of each other, okay? They are. Now, one of the things we know about the inverse is this. I'm going to draw a line down the middle of these two, okay? That's a dashed line because it's only a border line. But if I draw this line right here, okay? And this is the line y equals x, okay? That's the line y equals x, you know, start at 0, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, okay? See if you can see this. Can you see reflection? See if you can realize it. So, like a barbecue screw, do you see I can reflect the green line? It reflects right onto the brown line. Or can you see the reflection of the brown line? Over this line, it reflects over onto the green line, okay? If that happens, then they will be inverses of each other. Or one way to graph an inverse is just to reflect it over this line, okay? So far, so good? Okay, can you guys see that? Okay, now, take the graph away. Everybody have the graph? Ah, uh, you don't need to copy example 5 notes because we'll look at it later, okay? So now let's look at the actual notes, okay? How am I doing? So inverse functions. All right, I'm going to highlight the inverse. Inverse functions, okay? And here it is, okay? I've got f of x is equal to some point x, y, and then it's inverse. We just switch them around, right? We switch the x for the y's and the x's, okay? So let's take a look at example one. These are the points. It's a point 0, 2, a point 1, 4, 2, 5, 4, 6, and 7. So I'm going to graph these, okay? And I'm going to graph these. Oh, let's use my blue pen. So I'll go 0, 2 is here, 1, 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? How's that? Okay. So there's my graph. Let's look at its inverse. So its inverse, let me do it in a different color. Let me do its inverse in, how about red, okay? Let's do its inverse in red. So to do the inverse, we're going to rewrite x, y. And we're just going to switch the points. That's all we're going to do. All we're going to do is this. Okay, instead of 0, 2, it's 2, 0. We're going to switch the x and y's. That's how we do. Instead of 1, 4, it's 4, 1. Instead of 2, 5, it's 5, 2, which, oh, I did that over here, didn't I? Look at me. 2, 0, 4, 1. I should look at my own notes since I wrote these. Um, instead of 2, 5, we've got 5, 2. Instead of 4, 6, I've got 6, 4, and 7, 8. So, you with me? All I did, super easy. Super easy. I just switch the points around, right? X becomes Y, Y becomes X, okay? So let's graph this. 0, 2 becomes 2, 0, so the point 2, 0 is here. 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. 6, 4, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, and seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Right, I'm gonna label these. The blue one is f of x, and the red one is f inverse of x, okay? And sure enough, if I were to draw in my line, I want to draw in my line y equals x, it should look like they are a reflection of each other folded over that line. Yeah, it looks like I could fold that one over there onto it, and I could fold that one onto it. So, pause for a minute. It's as easy as Watch the hands. X becomes Y, so you just switch all the values, right? That's all you do. Easy, right? Okay, now let's take a look at example two, all right? So in example two, we weren't given a chart, just a graph, but I can graph this, right? Okay, this is the same thing as a one-fourth X, so start at negative five, right? One, two, three, four, five, start at negative five. The slope is one-fourth, so I'll go up one over four, up one over four, it's off my paper, but I'll squeeze it in there. So here's my function, here's f of x. Here's my original, okay, that's my f of x. Now, if I want the inverse, another way to do it is to switch all of the points. Switch every single point, but there's a whole lot of points, right? There's an infinite amount of points. But x and y as variables represent all the points. So if I want to switch all the points, I just switch the variables. I'm going to make the x become the y and the y become the x. So to do the inverse, I'm going to say x equals, oh, thank you, x equals y over 4 minus 5. Now, if when I switch the <laughs> variables, I've switched all of them, haven't I? Boom, x becomes y, y becomes x. Every single point on that graph has been switched. But let's solve it so we can graph it. So I do want to solve for y so I can graph. So to solve, I'll go plus 5, plus 5, and x plus 5 equals a y over 4, right? I'm just solving. Multiply by 4, so I'm going to multiply up by 4 times by 4. So I would have a 4x plus 20 equals y. And this is the inverse equation. So I'm going to say f inverse is equal to 4x plus 20. Okay, f of x and y are the same thing, right? So this is the inverse. And if I could go all the way up to 20, I would, but it's off my graph. Okay, what I can do is maybe put down a couple little points. I could put the opposite of this one, would be back here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And I have a point at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'd go negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4. And the inverse graph would look something like that. Okay? Easy, isn't it? Okay? So if we need the inverse equation, if we need the inverse equation, if we need the inverse equation, we switch x and y and solve. Got it? If we need the inverse equation, I switch to x and y and solve for y. Okay? All right. Example three. How am I doing? So far, so good? So 3x plus 6, I can do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, up 3 over 1, so it's basically this graph right here. I agree with that. This is the one we did in the reading. Exact same problem, right? Okay, there's my function, right? But on the reading, I already gave you the inverse equation, didn't I? Right? I mean, we knew the re on the reading the inverse equation was a 1 3rd x minus 2. Let's do that. Let's make it. So we already know the answer has got to be this 1 3rd x minus 2, but that's actually, if we didn't know the answer, how do we do it? So if we need the inverse equation, if we need the inverse equation, we just simply switch x and y, the variables, because you want to switch them all, right? So switch the variables. So rewrite this as f of x and y are the same thing, right? f of x and y are the same thing. So rewrite this as x equals 
3y plus 6. So if you need the inverse equation, if you need the inverse equation, switch the x and y variables. And then let's solve, solve for y, okay? So let's solve for y. Minus 6, minus 6, right? x minus 6 equals 3y. Divide by 3, divide by 3, right? So I get y equals, now this is a 1x, I don't normally write it, but there, as, there's a 1 there, right? There's a 1 there. So I'd have a 1 third x minus 2. And I can graph that, right? So I can graph this, start at negative 2, I go up 1, over 3, up 1 over 3, here is my inverse line f inverse of x. A little negative one, f inverse. Okay, not too bad. So it really comes down to doing one thing, only one thing. Switch the x and y's. That's how you do. Either you switch the x and y coordinates of a point, or you switch the whole x with every y, and you graph it from there, okay? So far, thumbs up. Okay, turn the page. All right. All right, so find the inverse equation to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's switch C and F, right? Let's switch C and F. All right, I can do that. I'm going to rewrite this as F equals 5 ninths times C minus 32, okay? That would be the inverse equation, right? Now, if I want to convert 35 Celsius to Fahrenheit, I can just plug that right in there, right? So I go, okay, F what? equals, am I going too fast? I just, all I did is I just switched C and F to F and C. Am I going too fast? I just switched C and F for F and C. So to do inverse, you just switch them. So we do. So now 32 Celsius will go 5 ninths times 35 minus 32, right? F equals 5 ninths times 3. I'm going to use my calculator. 15 ninths. 15 divided by 9 equals about 1. Whoops, I am on the wrong button, okay? About five, no, divide by nine. About 1.6. All right, example five. Example five. Now, example five, let's graph it. You guys know how to graph a parabola. We've done this, this tons of time, right? So let's do it. Now do this in pencil, don't use a pen because we're going to have to erase. Okay, do this in pencil. Okay, this is a tricky question. It really is. Start at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. You guys agree with that? This is easy. This part's easy. But do this in pencil because we're going to do some erasing real quick. Okay, now, do you remember how we do a parabola? 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Remember that? 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Sure, Tamley. What's 1 squared? 1, 2 squared? 2, 3 squared? 9, right? So 1, 1, remember I did this? 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? This is the very first chapter we did in here was graphing parabolas. And we know it's symmetrical. We know it's a smiley face. So we'll put the other points over here and here and here, right? Okay, got it. Well, not very good, but, you know, good enough. How's that? So first of all, there it is. So domain of the function. So what's our domain of this function? What do you guys think? What's the domain? How wide is this graph? How wide is this graph? Forever? Is it forever wide? Even though it's going up, it's always going over, isn't it? It's always going over. So the domain's got to be x equals all real numbers, right? 
How about the range of this graph? How about the range of this graph? Well, the range is reach for your reach for your range. Why? It starts at negative four and goes up, but it doesn't go down here at all. The graph does not go down. You guys agree? No graph back here. So it starts at negative four and goes up. So we're going to say y is greater than or equal to negative four. So far, so good, right? Okay. Let's look at its inverse, okay? Let's look at its inverse. So to do its inverse, let's just do it by a point to point, because first of all, this is the point at zero, negative four, right? So its inverse would be at negative four, zero. One, two, three, four, okay? That point, this point goes right there. That's its inverse. This point goes here. This is the point at one, negative three. So its inverse would go at negative three, one, two, three, one. This point's at two, zero. So its inverse would have to go at zero, two. This point's at three, five. So its inverse is at one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, okay? So its inverse is gonna look something like here, right? But then there's the, the bottom half, right? How am I doing so far? I'm just switching the points. So this point is at negative 1, negative 3. So its inverse would be at negative 3, negative 1. Um, this point right here is at negative 2, 0. Its inverse has got to be at 0, negative 2, which is here. Okay. So we're going to get this kind of a graph down here, okay? I'll let you catch up. So all I did is I took every single point on the original on f of x on the function, and I switched them, and I graphed it, okay? Took every single point on the graph, and I reversed them, and I graphed it. And I got the sideways things. Now here's the big question, okay? If you aren't awake, you only have to be awake now for the next, like, two minutes. you got to listen. If you're not going to listen at all, now is the time to listen. Are you ready? Is this sideways graph a function? No. No. So therefore, the way it goes right now is this has no inverse. This graph has no inverse because its inverse isn't a function, right? So we can't draw that down because it's, it's not a function. But we can fix it. We can fix it. So what we want to do is fix our function. Fix our function, okay? So let's fix our function. What I don't like is the inverse doesn't work, right? So what if I could get rid of this bottom part? Like, just erase it. If I erased it, it would work, but if I erase this bottom half, I would have to erase this back half of my original graph, wouldn't I? So if I did that, okay, well, wait a minute, I can go ahead and just, like, if I erase this back half of my original graph, just erase it, get rid of it, okay? Right? But then this bottom half of this graph would be gone too, right? Right? I know, this, not, this looks weird, doesn't really, this doesn't make any math sense, okay? This is not, no, first of all, wait a minute, this is not an art class. This is a math class, where everything has to have exact and rules, you just can't erase in math unless you have a rule. So we are going to restate the domain. I'm going to restate the domain. On the original function, I'm not going to say the domain is all real numbers. I only want this, I only want this part of the original graph. I only want this part of the, I don't want the back half. So I restate my original domain as x is greater than or equal to zero. I restate my domain. So by saying x is greater than or equal to zero, I only want the positive half of this graph, not the back half. By doing that, when I flip it over, its inverse is a function, right? So I had to erase this back half of the graph. You can't do that. This is not an art class, but we can change the domain so that we never graph that in the first place. So now, it has a function, doesn't it? So now, f of x 
equals x squared minus 4, where I say x is greater than or equal to 0, it has a function. It has a function. Well, what is it? What's its equation? Equation. We're almost done, really. What's the equation of the inverse? Of the inverse. Okay. All right. Write that down. Equation. What is the equation of the inverse? Okay. Equation of the inverse. Okay. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me flip it over. Ah, so I wanted the inverse equation. What did I do? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I flipped x and y. So if we want the inverse equation here, we're going to do the same thing, right? So we had this. We had y equals x squared minus 4. But now, now it's not y equals x squared minus 4. Now it's x equals y squared minus 4, right? Can we solve? Can we solve for y? Solve for y. Can we do that? Sure, we can solve for y, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to go plus 4, plus 4, right? So we're going to have an x plus 4 equals y squared, right? And then what? Square root. Square root it. So we're going to have the square root of x plus 4. 4 equals y. Now, if Claire were here, she might say something as silly as, don't write this down. Claire would say this, but don't write this down. Claire would say, Mr. Davies, isn't it supposed to be plus or minus? And I would say, yes, Claire, but we got rid of the minus part of this graph, didn't we? We got rid of the negative part of this graph, so I'm not going to say plus or minus at all, just the positive part of the graph, because the minus part is the part we don't want. That is the inverse equation. So I'm going to say f inverse of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Solely. Could you do it as the square root of x plus 2, or do you have to keep it in that form? You have to keep it in that form. And I'm going to explain that in a second, okay? Let me go ahead and stop my recording. All right, and...